Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and in this Barclays algorithm for clock synchronization video, I'll be discussing basics of algorithm, computational steps of algorithm and a numerical example of algorithm. So let's get started. Clocks are one of the most important components of computers and other devices. However, due to various factors, these clocks may drift from the standard frequency or tick rate and may gain or lose time with respect to the reference clock and this time difference between the two clocks is called clock skew. This clock skew may gradually increase and eventually cause desynchronization of the computer clock from the reference clock which could affect their normal operations. Therefore, it requires synchronization of the computer clock with the reference clock to minimize clock skew. Several algorithms or protocols were proposed for synchronizing clocks and Berkeley's algorithm is one of them. Berkeley's algorithm is used for clock synchronization. It is based on the master-slave architecture where one node is elected as a master which is responsible to compute the correct time. However, it assumes that master's time may be inaccurate. Therefore, master periodically requests time from all its slaves, computes the time difference from it and subsequently the correct time, then sends the correct time to every slave in the form of their time difference from the correct time. If the master fails at any point, then a new master is elected to take over and function exactly like its predecessor. For calculating the correct or synchronized time, we need readings of current time of master and all slaves. Here, master's time is Tm, first slave's time is Ts1, second slave's time is Ts2 and third slave's time is Ts3. There are three main steps to compute the correct time or synchronized time. First, compute time difference. Second, compute average time difference. Third and final, compute correct time and time correction. In the first step, master computes the time difference between its clock and the clock of all non-faulty slaves. So, here we have got three slaves. Therefore, it will compute the time difference with slave 1, slave 2 and slave 3. It also computes the time difference with its own clock as per the proposed version. Note, the time difference could be positive or negative. In the second step, master computes the average of all time difference, including itself. The general formula is to add all time differences and divide by the total number of non-faulty clocks, assuming that master's clock is also non-faulty. Note that it ignores time from the faulty clock based on a fault tolerant averaging function. In the third and final step, master computes the correct time and sends an adjustment time to each slave machine to correct and synchronize its time. So here, the correct time equals master's time plus average time difference, which is the correct time of the master and network. Next, the time correction for slave 1 is t correct minus ts1. Similarly, the time correction for slave 2 is t correct minus ts2 and finally the time correction for slave 3 is t correct minus ts3. Note this adjustment time could also be positive or negative and it does not send an absolute time instead it only sends the adjustment time therefore transmission delays do not interfere with synchronization. Now let's look at an example. Here we have got three slaves with one master and their clocks are non-faulty where master's time Tm equals 10 hours 25 minutes and 33 seconds. First slave's time Ts1 equals 10 hours 25 minutes and 13 seconds. Second slave's time Ts2 equals 10 hours 25 minutes and 23 seconds. And third slave's time Ts3 equals 10 hours 25 minutes and 43 seconds. Note that time format used here is hours, minutes and seconds. We should also include milliseconds but for the sake of simplicity I haven't included milliseconds. 
In the first step, master computes the time difference between its clock and the clock of all non-faulty slaves. Here, we have got three non-faulty slaves. Therefore, master will compute the time difference with these three slaves. So, the time difference with slave 1 is minus 20. Next, the time difference with slave 2 is minus 10. And the time difference with slave 3 is 10. It also computes the time difference with its own clock as per the proposed version. However, that is 0. In the second step, master computes the average of all time differences including itself. The general formula is to add all time differences and divide by the total number of non-faulty clocks which is minus 5 seconds and written as 00, 00, 00, 05 in the format of hours, minutes and seconds. In the third and final step, master computes the correct time and sends an adjustment time to each slave machine to correct and synchronize its time. So, the correct time equals master's time plus average time difference, where master's time is 10 hours, 25 minutes and 33 seconds and average time difference is minus 5 seconds. So, the correct time is 10 hours, 25 minutes and 28 seconds. This will be the correct time of the network and master. Once we know the correct time, then we can calculate the time correction for all the slaves. So, the time correction for slave 1 is 15 seconds. Similarly, the time correction for slave 2 is 5 seconds and the time correction for slave 3 is minus 15 seconds. Note, this adjustment time could be positive or negative and it does not send an absolute time. Instead, it only sends the adjustment time. Therefore, transmission delays do not interfere with synchronization. This concludes my presentation and thanks for watching my video.